Don't just be a data scientist, aim higher and get paid for it. This is part one of a two part series. Many of you have asked me about how to become a data scientist so you can progress in your organization by whatever metric you think is important or find a job that pays well. This is particularly relevant in today's tight economy and job market. I'll assume that in your current role, you are familiar with technology, perhaps a bit of programming and have some aptitude for quantitative fields. But before I answer that question, please hit the subscribe button and click on the bell icon to be notified of videos in architecture and AI that I publish every other week. Okay, so you wanna become a data scientist. Where do you start? Most important, you need a degree of curiosity. You should be able to analyze any environment and make the best decisions or convince your boss to make the best decisions. You can develop your skills to make decisions from gut feel, from your knowledge, from your experience, or from the data that's available to you. Decision-making is a big topic by itself, but I'm just going to go over the data part, which is what data scientists primarily use to help make decisions. You make decisions every day. For example, if tomorrow someone gives you a thousand dollars or 10,000 rupees, what should you do with it? You could invest it, you could pay off some debt, you could splurge on yourself, you could donate it, or you could do something else with it. Either explicitly or implicitly, you are considering many factors and making your decision. If you use data as one component of that decision, you could be a data scientist in the making. Okay, to become a good data scientist, what do you need? Let's go level by level. First, you should realize and understand that there is a lot of data around you. This is in the form of documents, spreadsheets that contain information, relational databases, non-relational databases, and so on. On top of that, you'll realize that most of this data is not connected to one another and they exist in their own silos. If you can connect the relevant data and extract value out of it, you are a data scientist. So how do you do that? Second, you have to understand how data is organized. Some data is organized as a table. An example is a spreadsheet of names of employees and their salaries. Data can be organized relationally as a set of tables with relationships among them. So if you have another table with the roles and details about salary history, then these tables could be connected to one another. Data can be organized as a hierarchy. An example is the org structure of your company. Here, you can traverse the tree to find out who has extra budget for a special project, for example. Data can be organized as a linked list. An example of this is words in a document. And with this structure, you can delete a word in the middle without changing the other parts of the data because you can redirect the pointer. Data can be organized as a graph. An example are the connections that people have with one another in a social media platform like Facebook. Data can be digital, but with no particular structure. Such unstructured data is difficult to represent, but one way to do this is to tag different parts of the data. An example of unstructured data is email content, which is in free form text. And there are many more. This layer falls under the discipline in computer science called data structures. Understand this topic to get a conceptual understanding of data. Third, you have to get an idea of the various software tools that can be used to probe and explore the data. For spreadsheets, 
you can use Microsoft Excel. For relational data, you can use a relational database management system or RDMS like SQLite. For hierarchical data, you can use a file system with folders and subfolders. For graph representations, you can use Neo4j. For unstructured data, you can use MongoDB. Again, these are just examples of tools and many software tools exist for each of these data structures. I left off the linked list structure on purpose. This structure can be implemented in any of the tools that I just mentioned, which is why it is important to understand the concept so you can implement it or recognize such a structure in the data when you see it. Fourth, you have to learn some techniques that can be used to explore the data now that you know how it's organized. For example, you can use the table data and create clusters to identify patterns. Here, you might be looking for groups or for example, from the clusters, observe that most productive people in your organization are those that mostly work remotely. That's what your cluster tells you. Or you could use a histogram and mean to understand the distribution of employee salaries. With this analysis, you can interpret how much a physician with a specific specialty from a specific town could be paid to attract her to the hospital you work for and be able to explain it to management. Here, you're using data to help management make decisions. With mean histogram, you used a statistical technique and with clustering, you used a machine learning technique like the k-means, but don't worry about that now. Just know that you have to learn many of these techniques. You might have heard that you should have a strong background in linear algebra or statistics to function as a data scientist or machine learning expert. It's at this level, level four, where you should brush up on your undergraduate stats in linear algebra to understand the concepts, but depth here is not so relevant. There are so many people who call themselves or their company calls them data scientists, but they have varying degrees of these kinds of expertise. In my mind, if you don't have all these skills and knowledge, you are not a data scientist, but that's for another video. With these four things, you will have the foundation for a strong data science career. But what next? Since today, people without all these skills are also called data scientists, how can you further your career and differentiate yourself? That's part two of this video, so don't miss out on that. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider subscribing. Also, you can download a free one-page visual summary of this video by signing on to my mailing list. For those who are already on my mailing list, you should have a one pager in your inbox already. Thank you deeply for spending some virtual time with me and giving me the motivation to do what I do.